We are living in a time of rebirth and peril. 1.5 billion children are out of school. The climate crisis is not improving. Here in Montreal, we're in the midst of our second lockdown of COVID-19, and the world is finally acknowledging this pandemic of systemic racism, inequality, and injustice that would just survived and thrived for hundreds of years to finally be eradicated, rightfully so. It is so easy to look at the world around us and be frustrated and angry, yet you know, passionate about a problem that has affected you personally. For me, it was at the age of 13 when I learned about my grandfather's diagnosis of vascular dementia. I learned that one in three seniors would be diagnosed with dementia in their lifetime. That's why in my final years at Dawson College for my last science or project, I designed this molecular probe for the early diagnosis and treatment of Alzheimer's disease. It gave me this sense of change making and I realized that, you know, all of us have this extraordinary untapped potential that we hold within, but we just need to realize it. You know, the world needs you. I need you. But lucky for you, the world is in the midst of this technological expansion from AI to nanotechnology and this increased connectivity amongst all of us around the world. It is so easy and people are finally realizing the true power that they hold within. Today, I share with you how you too can become a change maker of 2021. Growing up, I was a very curious child with a plethora of questions. I remember visiting my first local science fair when I was in grade five in the south shore of Montreal. And I remember seeing these students who were just a few years older than me working on problems that you know I only heard on the news. I was immediately inspired and knew this was definitely something I wanted to be a part of not just because that high school that I was going to forced everyone to do science fairs like I know many of us in this audience, but it was a way of tackling real world problems and just exploring the world and not being confined to the classroom walls. I started off designing helmets to help prevent concussions to in grade nine, discovering this alternative treatment to prostate cancer. In grade 10, I worked on developing this diagnostic strip to detect bladder cancer during its earliest stages. I worked on, in grade 11, discovering a part of the brain that's responsible for preserving cognitive function in Alzheimer's disease patients and how exercise can act as a non-pharmacological approach for the neurodegenerative disease. And in my last year of science fairs in Dawson College, I designed this molecular probe for the early diagnosis and treatment of Alzheimer's disease that essentially can be injected into a person's bloodstream, make its way to the brain and light up if it detects this protein that is highly present in the disease pathogenesis. Not only that, it has the potential to kind of leave the brain and go to the rest of the bloodstream and essentially you can pee out Alzheimer's disease. I was able to explore the world and meet amazing like-minded individuals from across the globe through these international science fairs. But I realized what it meant to be a change maker. It meant to align your passions with your wanting to do good for this world. And that truly fascinated me. It doesn't matter your age, race, religion, or gender. Anyone can have impactful change. And that was just truly incredible. But why is it important to be a change maker? I believe becoming an agent of change is the key to happiness and that to be successful, one should strive to be a change maker. Growing up in high school, I joined teams and clubs simply due to the fact that it brought me joy. By grade nine, I was working on science or projects that got me to the bio testing facilities, to hospitals, to national science fairs. But like many other kids who hoped to one day enter medical school, I became obsessed with you know, checking off these imaginary preconceived boxes. It was in success and being constantly surrounded by these world-renowned PhDs and successful entrepreneurs that I fell into their ways. I became obsessed and manifested success by latching on to these random projects, which in turn would make me feel less inferior. The more successful I became, the more this insecurity grew as it is directly proportional. By the time I was in grade 11, graduating high school, I was on six sports teams and I had a CV that resembled that of a PhD. You know, my accomplishments that I'm proud of were, you know, fun and all. I pondered greatly of how this affected my brain chemistry. I won best and fair at these international science fairs and presented my innovations across the globe, but it came at what cost? I had severely drifted away 
from what I enjoy doing most, and that is working on solving the world's most pressing issues. Since then, I have internally shifted, you know, my definition of success, and that is to work on hard problems that I'm passionate about, which derives the greatest amount of happiness as a byproduct. You can flirt with the idea of checking off boxes all you want and do what is expected of you, or you can just do cool stuff, because it is priceless to meander in high school and in university and find what you're truly passionate about and then compound that knowledge for the next you know, 50, 60 years instead of graduating, getting this nice, comfy corporate job and realizing in your 40s that, you know, this is not something you want to do. There is a drastic half-life to an individual's ability to take risks as they age. So I urge you all to get started on your journey of change making, or you can just, you know, enjoy the rest of lockdown. Now you're probably thinking, wow, the Sean guy better tell me some actionable steps to be a change maker or I will riot. Well, I got you. I see this as a three-step process where one, you find a hard problem that you're passionate about. Two, you find who can facilitate this change. And three, communication. The first step is to find a problem you are passionate about. My friend Ellie from Kenya once said, start with empathy, then learn to speak courage fluently. This empathy that fuels us, and but most importantly allows for an individual to make this world a more equitable, a more sustainable place. The second idea is who can you approach to make our ideas a reality? Now you can't wait for purpose to come to you because it simply doesn't come to people waiting at the starting blocks. So who can we approach to help facilitate the change we wanna make in the world? I've sent hundreds of emails when trying to get my projects and initiatives off the ground. Most of these being rejections simply due to the fact of my age or that I didn't have a couple extra letters at the end of my name. So who can we approach? The key is to have meaningful conversations with two types of people. One, government officials, and two, leaders in the private sector. These types of people have the greatest exposure to facilitate the change that you want to make in the world, especially if you're both passionate about the same problems. The last step is communication. Now the work of good science is not done until communicated with empathy and compassion. And this is especially the case for grassroots movements, whether it be designing a diagnosis for a neurodegenerative diseases or fighting the plastic pollution in the rivers of Bali, People want to listen to a person who has access to society in a way others don't. And this is when a personal connection becomes crucial in not only communicating your ideas, but finding allies and co-travelers. Now, in the words of Maya Angelou, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. These are the three steps that are primordial in becoming a change maker of 2021. To catapult you in the right direction, I urge you all to ask yourself four questions. Firstly, what is your kryptonite? What are your shortcomings? What are your biases? Secondly, who are your allies? Who are your co-travelers? Who are the people that can complement your skills and also the skills you don't have? Thirdly, how do I play the game while trying to change it? And lastly, what can I do right now to start creating what I want. In other words, how do I activate all the levers I can? Now, especially for the past year, you may feel lost of exactly what you wanna do. Or after hearing me, you may be confused of what problem you wanna get started on and that you're passionate about. Now, I wouldn't get too hung up on the fact of how screwed the world is, but instead I would kind of tell myself, listen, things are gonna happen, both good and bad, and I have the responsibility to allocate some of the goodness in my heart to as many people as possible. And honestly, if that scares you, just get started. <laughs> At the end of the day, to be a change maker means to be able to inspire others, to adapt to the environment around you, to be the change that you wanna see in the world. And considering how we have all had to learn to adapt in the past year, deep down, you are already a change maker. Us young people are always told that we are the next generation. We are the future doctors, lawyers, activists, and engineers. We are the leaders of tomorrow, but we do not need to wait until tomorrow to lead. Thank you.